Well, hello guys. Um, my name is Janelle Martinez. Y'all may know me as Nautica Phantasma at nauticaphantasma.tumblr.com. And I'm here to show y'all how to make a sorcerer's ball out of a magic eight ball. Um, whether you're using this for cosplay, for decoration, or whatnot, doesn't matter to me. But this is just to make a basic sorcerer's ball. If you want to make one that's super deluxe, um, you can go to the craft store, buy one of those plastic ornament things. Um, do the same thing as what I'm going to do to the 8 ball minus um, the sandpaper. And then just add a little LED light inside to make it glow. Um, I'm doing an 8 ball because it's cheaper for me. Um, it also depends on where you live, depending on what the prices of the 8 balls are. But I'll get started, okay? Alright, so first of all, you're going to need a magic 8 ball. Of course, I've already sanded down half of it, but it's a regular old magic 8 ball. Um, see? Um, this magic 8 ball was more or less around like 5, between 5 to 8 dollars at my local Walmart. Um, you can get them almost anywhere that they sell toys really like here San Antonio we have like HEB you can get them probably at like a dollar mart or something I guess um, again depends on where you live alright so one thing that you want to do is as you can see here the 8 ball is kind of um, very very smooth now that is manufacturer lamination um, one thing that you want to do is what I did here, is you want to sand it down. Um, sand it down to take off that lamination so that way your paints can stick onto the surface. Now the type of sandpaper that I use is actually a block of sandpaper. It's double sided. Here's regular sandpaper and then here's a scrubby side. It's like a sponge. Um, it's a sandpaper block and here is, let's see if y'all can see that, um, here's what I use. It's a 3M 180 grit extra fine pro grade sandpaper. It's ultra flexible block um, sanding sponge and it, ha and it says it channels dust, which more or less means it just like keeps everything on the pad. It like soaks up the dust like an actual sponge. So um, one thing that you're going to do is you're just going to start off with your 8 ball and you're just going to rub it. And you want to take off everything until the 8 ball is completely black. See what I'm doing here? See how the 8 is disappearing? Yeah. You just want to do that. All the way around all right see how that's super easy yeah just give it some elbow grease and you'll be on your way um, it doesn't really matter how how you do this as long as you no longer see any type of sheen shine or anything as long as it's not shiny as long as it looks kind of matte like a matte finish that's what you're aiming for doesn't matter how much you send it, just as long as it's not shiny anymore. Um, to make sure that you get all of it, you can run it under some water. Um, you know, so under some water and let it dry um, to make sure that you didn't miss any type of shiny parts. But, oh, and also, if you want to wear gloves, you can wear gloves too. Um, I didn't because I don't really care, but if you do that... <laughs> Your hands are going to get all black. Wah. So, anyways, um, you're going to sand this all down. See, like that. Um, if you have, like, a tough spot that won't come out, you can use the this side and just, like, scrape at it. And then just, yeah, just like if you were using a double-sided sponge to wash dishes. Um... You, once you're done with that, you turn it on the top and carefully sand around the edge. You don't want to scratch this part. Um, why? Because I think it's cool to have a fortune-telling sorcerer ball, don't you think? 
<laughs> yeah. So I'm just going to carefully sand around the edge right here because I want to get paint here, but I also don't want to like ruin the fortune telling aspect of it. So see, now it's all nice and matte. You can run your fingers around it. Of course, you're going to get some dust on it, more than some dust. Um, just to make sure there's no smooth parts. If you see a smooth part, just sand it off. You know, like shake it off, except sand it off. Yeah. My my puns, my jokes are bad. Every time I tell a joke, the aquifer level drops. The drought in Texas gets worse. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways. Um, here we have a completely finished eight ball. Um, what you can do is you can cover the glass part with some tape or something if you want. Um, I'm pretty confident in my painting skill, so I'm just going to leave that um, right there. I'm just going to leave that open. Alright, so one thing that I did is I went to my local craft store and I bought some acrylic paint. Why acrylic? Well, because first of all, um, oil paints take like so long to dry. It's unrealistic. Um, Second of all, just acrylic paints are pretty good. They're a pretty good go-to paint. They're pretty cheap compared to other paints. If you want to, you can use, um, you know, like, what are those auto body paints? You can buy, like, spray paints and stuff. I want to use acrylic because I'm going to do something called blending. All right, and it's harder to blend with like a spray paint or something else. Acrylic paints are easy to work with. All right, so what I have is I have Amsterdam um, brand acrylic paints. Um, this is number 605. Of course, um, what I recommend is you get two different pink, um, two different greens, um, different shades, one darker than the other, and but at the same time, you want to keep them like sort of close together. You don't want too much contrast. Um, though the more colors of green, the better. I'm using two for right now. So this is 605 in the Amsterdam, St uh, Amsterdam Standard Series. And this is 618 in the Amsterdam Standard Series. Um, this is Brilliant Green and permanent green light so permanent green light brilliant green all right so what i'm going to start doing is i'm going to open up my light colored one first and more or less i'm just gonna squirt it right on like that just ooze it on i'm gonna take just a regular old brush um i prefer soft brush brushes you know soft bristles See how nice and soft that is? Um, I want to take one of these and I'm just going to rub it around. And it doesn't matter how it's rubbed on right now, just get it covered at this point. So I'm just going to rub it on there. You know, just cover it up, cover it up. And here you don't want to worry about too much about not getting your paints mixed up because we're just going to mix the paints. And here's where you can let all your painting tension out. You can just like go crazy with these paints, all right? So I'm only gonna do part of this because in order to do the whole thing, I'm gonna need to like dry it and stuff. But so that way you have an idea of what to do. Here's what I did. I just covered it just right now in light colored green, all right? So then after that, after I get the light colored green, I'm gonna just get a little bit of the dark colored green, darker color, and I'm just gonna put a little bit on my brush, all right? Just a little dollop, something like that. Yeah. Um, and I'm just gonna grab my thing, and every, like here and there, I'm just gonna add like different low lights of green. Um, more or less on the top and around the sides I'm just gonna sort of make like a mixed effect with the green and I'm more or less when I paint this I'm gonna do like a swirly pattern um, 
So that way it has that sort of effect that, hey, this is a sorcerer's ball, there's like magic swirling around. And that's more or less what I'm just going to do, is I'm just going to keep on alternating between light green and dark green um, to make that sort of low light, high light effect on it. You can, you know, you can go crazy with this. Um, there's no set way of doing this. Just um, do whatever you feel is right. Um, yeah, just do whatever you feel is right. You can add more highlights, more lowlights, and stuff like that. Um, yeah, I'm getting green all over. <sighs> you can just go crazy with this. Like, I'm going to add more lowlights to this. So, yeah. See, you can just add whatever. Whatever makes you feel more powerful, like the sorcerer, you just do that. And you just add like a mix of greens. Don't completely blend the greens. If you completely blend the greens, then it's not going to look as neat. But more or less you're aiming for a different a collection of greens on the ball. If you want to, you can let one color dry and add another or something. But this is what I'm doing right now. I'll let y'all know um, how this turns out. Um, right now, all I'm just aiming for is just something that looks somewhat like the Sorcerer's Ball. Again, if you want to do like a deluxe version of this, and eventually I'll put a video out on how to do a deluxe version of the Sorcerer's Ball, um, you'll get, you'll more or less get a large um, ornament about the size about something that can stand in your fist the way an eight ball does and you'll paint it you'll paint it like this and you'll you can add like a LED light inside to make it glow with ominous stink power so um, for now you can just work on covering your eight ball and once it's covered it'll look somewhat like a sorcerer's ball all right just let your imagination flow, go wild with this thing. Alright? So, guys, until next time, stay Bruce. I'll make sure to put more tutorials on on how to do different props and stuff, if they help you at all. Um, like, reblog, post to whatever other social media you have. And I'll be back, okay guys? See y'all soon. Make sure to follow me.